<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and if you have a fat PlayStation 2, I'm going to be showing you all here with a quick video how to install the Romeo mod on it. Now, this is recommended for the last versions of the PlayStation 2, versions 9 and 10, and really the only reason why you'd want to worry about this is if you plan on playing burn discs on it. Um, I'll explain what it does and why we're going to be doing this. So I have a uh, fat PS2, it's a version 9 model, and it has a mod chip installed in it. Um, now this does not have the Romeo mod done to it, but the reason why we're doing this is because starting with version 9, um, and also in version 10 of the fat PS2, Sony ended up doing something where, um, in short with their ways right here, there's this chip, and uh, this ends up running at a higher voltage than previous models. And because of that, um, it can actually blow out the laser and burn it out uh, much faster and easier if you are using low quality burn media or you're playing scratched up burn discs of some kind. Um, and most DVD media out there really isn't the best. So of course you could avoid this just by playing games off your hard drive, but I digress. We're doing this for the fun and for the preservation of this system right here. So. What you need to do is there is this chip that you need to find, and this is right next to, uh, well, technically to the left of the DVD drive ribbon right here, which I've disconnected. So you want to come to this chip, and you want to look on this side, and you want to come down, and there is going to be pin 15, 16, 17. It's the third pin up. That's pin 17. You need to lift this pin up so it's no longer connected to the motherboard. And then you're going to need to solder that pin to a 5 volt point. So we're going to be soldering this uh, right here to this point right here. You're going to look for this hole that is underneath the uh, D well the uh, port where you hook up your network drive or a network adapter. And there's going to be this big hole right here. We're not going to use that. We're going to use the tiny hole that is right above that. So all we're doing is we're going to lift that pin, solder a wire to it, connect it to that hole. And once we do that, it's going to run this chip at a lower voltage and we're going to be able to protect our laser that way. Um, so I'm going to show you all how to do that real quick. Now with a version 10, it's the exact same thing. You end up lifting the chip, soldering a wire to it, but there's different 5 volt points. So I'm going to have a diagram for that on screen in case you have a version 10 PS2. So aside from the end point of where you solder it to, it's the same process. Same chip, same pin, same process of lifting it. Alright, so we're just going to be really careful doing this mod, but what I'm going to do right here is take a q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol clean up these pins clean up that point right there and that will be it for that now what i'm going to do is might as well use a little bit of flux on here as well too um i'm going to take some flux which i would always recommend this for soldering and We'll just dab it on like that. Kind of just spread it a little bit right there and spread it on this chip right here just on those pins. Can't really get one pin specifically there, unfortunately. And then what we're going to be doing here is uh, first let me go ahead and tin the point that we're going to be working with. So first off, I'm just tinning this point with a bit of solder so we can easy, easily solder to it. There we go, that's done. I'll even put a little bit more on there just to be generous because we want this to be easy. There we go. And I'll go ahead and find the point right there. That is the one we're going to be working with. So really, I don't even have to do too much on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tweezers. Hopefully you all can see that. Yep. I'm going to take my tweezers and kind of grab that pin right there. We don't want to break it. Again, we really don't want to break it because we still want this pin to work. And take that pin. Heat it up, and we need to lift it. All right, so it wasn't the best job right there, but what I did was I kind of heated up that point a little bit, and I was able to get it loose enough where I just kind of like pried it up myself with these small tweezers. Um, so now what I want to end up doing is I would like to go ahead and flux this properly and also tin it to make our connection nice and easy. So with that, what I'm going to be doing here is I went ahead and flux it up. I'm going to tin the tip of my soldering iron. Put a little bit of solder on there. There we go. That's really all we need. Uh, I can put a little bit more on. Hmm. 
Okay, that's good enough. I can already tell it's lifted and such. Now what we need to do is we're going to take some 30 gauge wire and I will go ahead and use some green wire for this job here for no particular reason honestly. But we're just going to take a little bit of wire and I already have it trimmed accordingly so I have just a tiny bit right there because that's all I need and I'm going to solder it first off to this end right here. There we go, we have that. Now I'm going to just run it over here, which is probably a little bit too much, but it's fine. Go ahead and straighten that out so we don't have any fraying going on. And there we go. And there we go. That's it. So guys, that's literally all we had to do. We've lifted the pin, we've soldered the wire to pin 17, and we've soldered it over to this point right here, which is gonna be our five volt. So at that point, what I'm going to do now is turn off the soldering iron. I'm going to partially put this system back together, test it out, and if it can play a game, then everything is working just fine. Because um, in the end, we still want it to play a game. So let's go ahead and put this all back together. Uh, before we clean this up as well, too, let me go ahead and clean that. And for cleaning this, all we need to do is take some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Clean these points up right here, just any points you hit, which would only be that, and the chip right here. And that's it. All right, so we got our PS2 assembled just enough so that we can still, you know, access it if we need to in case we messed up something. But as you can see, PS2 comes on, which is a very good sign. Now what I'm going to do right here is eject this, grab my copy of Hunter the Reckoning, Wayward, as you can see. Got the original right there, but let's go ahead and fire this thing up. So it's spinning up, which is again another good sign. And if we wait a bit... There we go. Cool. So I'm going to do, I'm going to test with a PS2 disc and a PS1 disc, but um, if your PS2 is modded already, like mine already has a mod chip, it's going to play copied games. Um, if it has not been installed with a mod chip, then you might as well just, you know, test it with regular games and make sure that those work fine. Uh, but here we go. Now at this point it is playing games and because we have the Romeo mod installed, our laser is going to be protected for longer. So since we know that that's working, I'm going to go ahead, reset this, pop this out, and we'll do another test with a PS1 game going to be using Mega Man Legends 2. Pop this thing in. Try to look at like the camera preview while I'm also doing this. Let's wait a little bit. Now with PS1 games, this has a little bit of weird behavior. As you can see like right there how it started flashing. So PS1 games take longer to boot up. And sometimes they don't boot up consistently, but let's see what happens. So eventually we got a booting. There we go. So we are now solid at that point. We've gotten our PS1 games to boot and PS2 games to boot, and I think we're ready to rock now. So again, perfectly okay right there. That is what I would call a successful Romeo mod install. So if this video helped you all out at all, it would be very much appreciated if you could leave a like on the video. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well too, and let me know if uh, this did assist you right here. Again, this would be recommended for PS2's version 9 and version 10. Uh, with the slim ones, versions 11 and 12, I know there's fixes out there. I didn't see much documentation on them, but I want to make a video covering the Romeo mod for versions 9 and 10 just so it's out there. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.